Greetings and welcome back to my channel. I'm here. You're glad today. I'm glad you're here today. I'm, my words are, I'm not dyslexic. I never had dyslexia as a child. I was actually a very good reader. I have many memories of reading many books as a child. You'd think I'd be a better writer today, but that's not the case. Anyway, I'm very excited to be here to introduce you to Eddie Lockjaw Davis with Shirley Scott cooking with Jaws and the Queen. I am really excited to get this. And I'm going to unbox it for you. You can hear it playing right now. Well, you hear, I have all of these original records. Cookbook volume one, two, three, and then something called Smokin'. I'm not sure what that is. But if we read the hype sticker there, celebrating Eddie Lockjaw Davis Centennial cookbooks, lacquers cut from the original analog by taste by Bernie Grumman, new liner notes by journalist Willard Jenkins. And on the bottom we have the legendary cookbook albums. Now, I'm actually really surprised these are coming out. I mean, I'm kind of shocked. I'd love to know who at Kraft or Concord said, boy, we need to put those out. Um, when you do find those records out in the wild, these records, they're always really well played because these were party albums. Party albums. These were feel good records. These were weekend records. These were swinging low in the cut kind of records. They were fun records. They take you back. I remember there was a Delmark record called Honkers and Bar Walkers. Back in the days when I think primarily in urban clubs in the major cities, in black bars rather, the saxophonists would get up and walk down the bar and hooting and hollering. And um, now Eddie Lockjaw Davis is a much more refined proponent of that thing, a wonderful player with Count Basie then on his own records. Just a magnificent player. Shirley Scott in the background. Often the great Al Harewood on drums. Anyway, let's uh, unbox this thing and see what we've got. See if they replicated. The, the other funny thing is on the originals, when they reissued them, because they did, they often have different covers or even different colors of covers. So let's see what we've got. Oh, smoking. The album smoking. I have the original on this. This is very attractive what they've done here. Very nice jackets. 20, 2022, 1963 craft recordings, manufactured and distributed by Concord, yada, yada, yada. You know what would be funny? Oh, this is interesting. So this, this is the original, uh, the first prestige stereo label. They have this gray thing. Of course, they don't have deep grooves, but uh, it comes in a nice, thick polyethyl, polyurethane sleeve. Some people don't like these sleeves. They think they're too heavy. I think they're fine. So we have smoking, so we're going backwards. Volume three, that's it. Feels very nice, beautiful. Even the spine looks great. keep going. Now, this is funny. Here's Cookbook Volume 2. Um, I just purchased a Cookbook Volume 2 that has a totally different cover. It's black and white with um, a nice photo of Locke, sort of an unrehearsed photo. Volume 2. Locke Dog Davis, Shirley Scott, Jerome Richardson, George DeVivier, Arthur Edgehill. And then Volume 1, These are such great records, man. Lockjaw, same lineup, with, but uh, George DeVivier on bass and Arthur Edgehill on drums. I, I wonder, I guess these all have the uh, first prestige stereo label, not the usual fireworks label, as Fred Cohen calls it. And here's the booklet. Wow, woo, beautiful photos. Now I assume, I assume all of these were originally cut at Hackensack, yep. 
captured these thoroughly blues immersed moments in time was the historic original habitat of Van Gelder studio and Rudy Van Gelder's parents' home at 25 Prospect Avenue in Hackensack, New Jersey. Great picture of Shirley Scott saying, uh, come again. She seems to be implying, you want me to do what with that solo? Then another great picture of Locke. Now you can see the blinds. That's one of the trademarks. You know, he's close to the blinds. That's another trademark of the uh, Van Gelder studio. Now this is it. I've never seen a photo of Arthur Edgehill, the drummer. Check it out. And then a photo of the tape box. Another nice Shirley Scott photo. Since these are not Blue Note, I wonder who took these photos. It's not Alfred Lyon. Another tape box. Photo of a young Jerome Richardson. His album on Prestige. He has a couple. Those are hard to find. And I think he actually played on some Steely Dan records later on. George de Vivier. Another. Oh, what's this? Bob Weinstock's recording notes for the June 20th, 1958 session. That's pretty damn cool. More Jerome, another one of Shirley with those telltale curtains in the back at Hackensack. What a great photo, man. Isn't that great? Now, I assume that's a Hammond organ. What a photo. Whoa. Here's Shirley with George de Vivier. What wonderful historical archival photographs. Willard Jenkins photo. Uh, Willard Jenkins is one of the finest jazz journalists out there. The other tape box, I guess, for volume three cookbook. And then, uh, then just more information. Cookbook volume one, two, and they, they listed as first course, second course, third course. Uh, to me, these are some of the most iconic records in jazz. Um, Eddie Lockjaw Davis really knew who he was and he knew who his audience was and he locked into it and he always delivered, man. These records are so, to me, eternally hip. And just, just listen how slow that tempo is. Nobody plays these slow tempos anymore. And to me, this is everything, and I don't mean to be a downer, but everything contemporary jazz isn't. Beautiful solos, great grooves, music anybody can relate to, just in the pocket, hardcore, grilling, swinging, visceral. And this is the laid back stuff. There's stuff on these records that's up tempo and burning. So anyway, I hope you get your copy. I will be reviewing this on my channel and I'm reviewing it somewhere else. I forgot where. Thanks, bye.